To be honest, I've been looking forward to getting my hands on one of these for quite a long time now. This is the JS400 MBKR, I think, uh, in matte black from Jack Guitars. Uh, and I'm sure you'll be able to see the not so subtle nod to what this guitar is influenced by. Um, later on in this video, I'll show you where you can get the best deal on one of these guitars. a Canadian roasted maple neck with a uh, modern C carve, nine and a half inch radius uh, and a rosewood fretboard. Uh, it's actually really nice to see companies like Jet using rosewood. It gives them an edge over Squire and Epiphone and, and even most Mexican fenders as well. The scale length is 25 and a half inches as you would expect on this style of guitar and it's really useful if you're into lower tuning um, which if you're going for a guitar like this is very much a possibility. It has a basswood body although uh, this one is a little bit heavier than I was, was expecting um, being basswood. It's, it's not a heavy guitar but I just expected it to be a bit lighter. It's about eight and a half pounds, which is a good strap weight, but to be honest, it means nothing because they're all gonna weigh completely different weights anyway. Um, the hardware is blacked out. You've got the bridge and the tuners, and the bridge is also a hardtail bridge. For electronics, we've got a single volume control and a uh, three-way switch, and probably the biggest surprise is the pickups. Well, it was definitely a, a big surprise to me anyway. These are medium to high output ceramic passive pickups and I always assumed that these were active pickups because of the way they look and the style of this guitar. Uh, but yeah, I was wrong that these are passive uh, pickups with black covers. To be completely honest, like I mentioned earlier, I've been really looking forward to getting one of these guitars. But I do have to admit, I was kind of confused, and the reason why is this guitar. This is the ST20HH Active from Hardy Benton. Uh, ignore the red knob, but it doesn't come with a red knob. That was my addition. Why a red knob? Well, if you know, you know. So these guitars, they, they pretty much look the same, um, but this Jet is about, well, it goes for about between 250 pounds and 265 pounds online. I'll tell you where to get the best deal in a sec. Uh, and this Harley Benton is about 130, so so nearly about sort of half the price of this guitar, and it's a good guitar. But as soon as I opened the Jet guitar, I could kind of see why. The neck on the Harley Benton is, it's a maple neck, but it's covered in this uh, satin paint. And when comparing the, the neck comfort and feel, the Jet is just, it's in a different league. And I don't want to say it goes from feeling like a toy guitar to a real guitar, but, I said it. The original active pickups that came on the Harley Benton sounded like nails on the chalkboard and I changed the pickups out for some budget old timer lightning bolts and it made the guitar sound a lot better. There's a video on my channel showing. Um, but then that added another 70 pounds and if I wasn't able to do that installation myself, that could have been another potentially like, like another 20 to 30 pounds per pickup. 
And at that point, we're looking at the same cost as the Jet guitar, but with all the extra hassle. But then the Jet is still a far superior guitar with the roasted maple neck, the rosewood fretboards, and the bone nut. The tuning stability has been very good. The tuners and bridge feel good enough that I wouldn't be in a rush to replace them. Uh, yeah, it'd be nice if it had locking tuners for faster string changes, but the stock tuners are fine. The paintwork and the finish is immaculate, and there's no blemishes or anything like that. And it feels like time has been put into, into this guitar. The same with the neck and with the frets and the setup as well. Yeah, I'll probably give the frets a little bit of a going over during the next string change. and just to make them a bit smoother and a bit shinier, but still out of the box, it's a lot better than most other things that I've had in this kind of price range. And actually the fret job is probably better than most guitars that I've had sort of two, maybe even three times the price. The three-way switch, it feels solid, but it's got that usual slightly clunky feel that nearly all sub 500 pound guitars have. I've had worse at higher cost. The volume pot is really good, but I found myself knocking it quite a bit and that's just a, a personal playing style issue. Uh, I think that I prefer the uh, freeway and the control to be swapped around. That would just be more useful to me. Again, it's just the me thing. You, you'll be fine. I'm really glad that they decided to go with a hardtail on this guitar. I'm not really a huge fan of the vintage style trims on more affordable guitars. I think that the kind of player that this is aimed at, you want the least amount of things uh, like to go wrong. Uh, and you don't want uh, newer players to have any kind of excuse to walk away out of frustration. And this keeps things very straightforward. But saying that, you can also be a much more experienced player and still really enjoy this guitar. I've had a lot of fun playing it. I think the pickups sound good. I'd say they're more kind of medium output than high. I was expecting more output, to be honest, from them, but they've got a really nice kind of clarity. And the guitar just feels like it's made for drop tunings and the pickups definitely excel there. I really like the extended cutaway and the lack of a neck plate. It feels completely unrestricted and playing all over the neck is effortless and I haven't found any dead spots or high frets or anything like that. So next I'll play a range of different sounds with this guitar, but before I do, I would love it if you would hit the subscribe button. It helps my channel massively, costs nothing, and lets me be able to create more content like this for you. Thank you.
If you're in the UK, then I think the best place to buy one of these is from House 95 Guitars. They seem to have the best prices right now. I, I, this isn't an affiliate link or anything like that. I just, I bought stuff from them in the past and the communication is great and I would highly recommend them. They're a small shop and they're very niche, but it's a niche that I'm well into. They are also available at Gear for Music and a few other places, but they are more expensive. I'll put a link to House 95 in the description. Uh, at the moment, I think they're just £250 there. And if you have that £250 to spend on a brand new guitar for playing rock and metal and that sort of thing, I don't think you can beat this guitar. It's got the aesthetic, it's got the... It's got the quality and it's got the value for money. And it's the perfect modding platform guitar, even if there's not really anything that needs changing. Last year, Fender brought out a special run of matte black uh, Tom DeLonge strats. It had a red knob and it literally sold out in seconds. So buy yourself a Black Pit Guards Invader clone and a red control knob, maybe even something kind of like this. Uh, and you have a really cool version of that guitar. Can you tell what video might be coming up next? Um, House 95 also sell these Invader clones and I'll be doing a shootout between this and the real thing pretty soon. I think Jet guitars are really cool and I made a video for a hot rodded 80s style super strap made by Jet. You can find that video here. I definitely recommend that you check that video out because it's a really cool alternative if you are thinking about this guitar.